What's up, class? Welcome to my Starfield Tips and Tricks series that I'm calling Space Camp. It's sort of like my Nomad Chop class for Fallout 4 and the Base Camp series I briefly did for Fallout 76. The only difference is that I'm going to be mixing in basic game tips and tricks along with the building element of the game. That way it can be the most helpful to the widest range of people. Overall, my first impressions of Starfield are actually pretty positive. From what I've heard online, some people love it and some people hate it. You know, fairly typical with any Bethesda game. Although, I do wish PS4 owners could also play the game from the jump. Now here are the reasons why I happen to like it, alright? Number one, it's a solo RPG. Like Fallout 4 and unlike Fallout Fallout 76, thank goodness. This place is insane. Number two, massively improved graphics over the last gen games, especially faces. They did a great job of rendering faces, I gotta admit. I did get more than a bit sidetracked reminiscing about old times. Number three, it's highly glitch free, which rocks. Now I didn't say completely of course, but I haven't had any major glitches affect my game so far and I'm many hours into it. I know that's like a, a low bar, but you know, it is a Bethesda game after all. I'm just happy they took the time for some serious quality control. Number four, the NPC management is actually quite robust. There's one scene, for example, where an entire segment of the population is scrambling away from an alien attack and it's not a cutscene. The game's AI is somehow able to handle literally dozens, possibly hundreds of individual citizens with their pathing and dialogue as they run for cover without any slowing down of the game. You know, I think that's pretty impressive and I think some of the critics are taking things like that for granted. Number five, it's a rather interesting new setting, you know, space exploration and all and it has a pretty intriguing main story plot. Number six, without giving too much away, you get to acquire superpowers, which is definitely unique from their other properties. Well, okay, I guess it's sort of like the Dragonborn powers from Skyrim now that I think about it. So yeah, I suppose you're working towards becoming a like a space Dovahkiin. <laughs> but it's still pretty cool. Number seven, although the building elements aren't as comprehensive as I'd hoped, it does offer two design options for us creative types, outpost building and starship building. Both are more modular in nature, but there's still a lot that can be done with that. And I'm gonna be working through a lot of videos showing you guys how it works, what can be done with it, inspiring your creativity and all that. Number eight, stylistically, they somehow managed to make things look modern and intact, but still time worn and realistic, you know? It's got much more of a Star Wars vibe than a Star Trek vibe, if you know what I'm saying. Although sometimes you'll start to get sick of that retro NASA vibe that you see in some places. Bethesda certainly seems obsessed with the whole 1960s theme, you know, in their games, that's for sure. Also, I compared the game to a cross between Fallout and Call of Duty in my last video, but that was mainly my impressions of the user interface and everything. Now that I've played it some more, I think it's actually more of a cross game-wise between Fallout 4 and Mass Effect Andromeda. So if you like those games, then you'll like Starfield. It is a pretty massive game, which is a good thing. You'll definitely get your money's worth. But because it's so big and there are so many things to do, I won't be doing a general walkthrough of the game, especially you know since I haven't finished my walkthrough of Fallout 4 which I do want to finish, if nothing else, than for posterity. Now, one of the criticisms of the game is its complexity. There's definitely a steep learning curve to the game. That can be a turnoff for the more casual player, you know? Once you're many hours into the game, everything starts to click into place. But it can be extremely intimidating for the first time when you try to navigate the game, which is bad from a game development standpoint, but great for content creators like me, because now I get to make videos teaching you guys how to make sense of everything. I don't know if that's Bethesda's attempt, you know, in making their game so ambiguous with their instructions on how to actually play it, because it does force people to go online and look stuff up and watch videos like I'm going to be making and stuff like that. And maybe that, you know, helps pump up the publicity for the game. I, I can't figure out why they can't just like give you a tutorial or have a little pop up showing you what buttons to press and stuff. But um, that seems to be a general running theme with Bethesda. You know, there's not a lot of like puzzles and like you know, riddles and things like that to solve in the game. All the complexity comes from just not knowing how to help do stuff, you know what I mean? But that's what this Space Camp series is gonna be all about. Now in real life, I've never attended an actual space camp myself, but it's basically an educational summer camp with a focus on various space sciences. 
So it's basically the perfect name for the Starfield series. One of the first things you'll notice about the skill system when you start playing in Starfield is that it takes a while to build up the necessary skills to start building proper outposts, as well as starships. You're gonna wanna eventually pick up outpost management and starship design. Those are two uh, particular perk trees, I guess you could call them. So while I grind away in real life and level up my character with enough skills and resource materials to start going to town on outposts, pun intended, I can still be posting helpful tips and tricks videos, you know what I mean? And just like I did with Fallout 4, I'm going to start with some of the basics and move my way up the ladder of complexity. You know, for example, lockpicking in Starfield is way more complex than it needed to be. Instead of lockpicks, you have digipicks, and I'm guessing the locks in the game are supposed to be kind of a cross between mechanical and electric locks. I understand they wanted to create a challenging mini game so it wouldn't be too much of a cakewalk, but I think they went a bit overboard. Which is why in the very next video, I'm going to give you the secret to solving them every single time. It took me a while to stumble on it, but I got to pass that knowledge on to save you guys some of that early frustration. So be sure to check out that next video and thanks for supporting this series. If you're watching this episode on the future playlist, then bookmark this playlist because I'm going to be posting to it quite a bit over the next several months. Definitely more videos to come. So like and subscribe if you haven't already. I'll see you in the next video and stay smart.